Hey everyone, this is Nick and I'm running out of ideas for what to say in these intros, so let's just get on with the Linux and open source news. First, Nextcloud Hub 5 was released and it's a major update that will give Google and iCloud a run for their money. We also have more details about System76's cosmic desktop environment, especially in the tiling department. And we have plans to shape up a GNOME mobile OS with a complete roadmap that might finally make it possible to use a real Linux distro on our smartphone. Just like this segue to our sponsor makes it possible for you to get started with your own server. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the only solution I use to run my own Nextcloud server and my only Office server as well. It's a super easy solution to deploy basically anything you want in one click. They have a huge marketplace of applications you can host, from Nextcloud, WordPress, Drupal, GitLab, or Grafana, to gaming servers for Minecraft, Arc, CSGO, Rust, Valheim, and more. They take care of all the configuration for you. All you have to do is click the thing you want to deploy, fill in a few details, and your server is up and running. And once everything is live, it's still super easy to manage your servers, to upgrade or downgrade them, add some storage, back them up, and get help if you're stuck. I've been using Linode for years now, and I can only recommend them. If you want to give them a shot, click the link in the description below, and you'll get $100 of free credit to get started. So Nextcloud introduced the new major version of their self-hosted cloud service that I personally use to manage this channel. And it's a huge update that makes Nextcloud the ideal alternative to Google or Apple. First, they've got a much better Notes app, redesigned with a more legible layout. And since it's now part of the core Nextcloud experience, the mobile apps to interact with these notes are now free of charge. And all the notes are now also rich text, which should make them way better to use than just pure markdown. In Nextcloud chat, you can see who is typing currently. You can add icons to your group chats, mention a group in the chat as well, and you can get instant message translations. You can also now replace your video chat background with a predefined image or blur your current background. And you can add call reactions with emojis for people who want to use that. And calls can automatically be transcribed. It's also possible to create a Nextcloud talk room with each calendar appointment you make in Nextcloud. And you can also let people book a meeting with you directly from a link. In terms of file management, tagging was improved as well. And you can use these tags to build automations, like posting a chat message when a file changes, converting files with a specific tag into a PDF, or limiting access to certain tags to a specific group of users. Tables, the data management app, now has better filtering, better search, and better sorting, and rich text fields for comments on various rows of data you input. You can also import CSV and XLS files, or fill in your tables through an API. And finally, Nextcloud Office now gets the ability to mention other people in a document, and it gets some quick templates. And now any Nextcloud user can create their own contact groups called circles. It's also now easier to link to various Nextcloud resources from other Nextcloud apps or pages using the smart picker introduced in the previous version. And there are a lot of smaller improvements like Microsoft Teams integration or Notion integration. And seriously, if you're privacy minded, give a shot to Nextcloud. It is a perfect replacement for the Google ecosystem or Apple's ecosystem. Now, System76 shared more information about their Cosmic Desktop, notably in the tiling department. It looks like the new auto-tiling will simplify things a bit compared to what we currently have on Cosmic. The current system lets you toggle auto-tiling and then also has an adjustment mode to let you arrange or resize tiled windows. But in the future Cosmic Desktop, this mode will be removed as you will just be able to use Shift, Super and the arrow keys to rearrange your windows, to group them, to stack them, and you'll be able to use super plus an arrow key to simply select the window you want to interact with. And to make sure that everything stays legible, they've added outlines and simple animations to convey where the window will be going and what it will replace. Now this should make using the keyboard to get a desired layout way more efficient and easier to understand. And they already published a list of the keyboard shortcuts that you will be able to use. 
Now for mouse users there will also be improvements, as stacked window groups will now have a small icon that lets you drag the whole group at the same time. The selected tab in a group will also be way easier to identify with a highlight color, the traditional neon cyan blue that PopOS uses. And these look like very cool changes. I can't wait to get an alpha or a beta to get my hands on and see how it works. I am worried about how other applications will integrate and look inside of Cosmic, but I guess we'll have to wait to find out. There was a Linux mobile hack fest in Berlin last week, focused on improving GNOME Mobile. They defined a complete roadmap for that, listing the issues and the work that is still necessary for the app platform. The GNOME Mobile shell, the portals, and all the necessary apps that are still not mobile friendly or not available at all on a mobile Linux distro, like Geary, your banking apps, an app for YouTube, or a note and to-do app that can sync. They also talked about image-based operating systems, which definitely make a lot of sense for a mobile OS to ensure the base is as secure and as solid as possible. And they looked at what could be their main distribution to kickstart development. There doesn't seem to be an obvious choice right now, as no mobile distro seems to have the most up-to-date drivers, which are crucial for phone hardware support on Linux, and also systemd at the same time which they plan to use for encryption and a lot of other features. Now they also talked about extending the MPRIS protocol that lays the system control audio playback for apps to let applications tell the system which buttons they need and what to display in the system interface, something that could also be very helpful for desktop Linux. And it's really nice to see that there's still interest for a Linux mobile smartphone. Not sure we're still a long ways away, but yeah, there's still development interest to make that happen, which is cool. And also they're taking into consideration that for a lot of people, the smartphone is an extension of what you're doing on your desktop or your laptop. And so they're planning for that with applications that can actually sync. Now in the GNOME desktop world, we have Nautilus adopting the most recent Libadvita widgets and work being done on improving search, which will now keep your grid view if that's what you prefer. Libidvita deprecated a few older components now that they have better replacements, including the leaflet view that handled pages inside of applications. And they also revamped the default apps panel in GNOME settings with a new Advita widget list, although it looks kind of worse to me because it seems to have lost all the app icons, which were really helpful to pick the default app that you wanted. Now, in terms of app updates, this is a huge week. Eyedropper, the color picker, got a new beta with better visual feedback, and that lets you search for colors from the activity overview in GNOME. EarTag, the audio file tag editor, now lets you rename files using a pattern, and it can identify files using Acoust ID. Design, which is a 2D CAD program, now supports line types like dotted lines, dashed lines, and more, and it can now export to various DXF versions for better compatibility with other programs. iPlan, the task manager, got a new version as well, with a new design for task rows, showing one full week per calendar page, letting you pick a due date more easily, with the options for picking today or no date right on top of the date picker, and the ability to auto-start in the background to handle reminders that you set up for your tasks. There's also a new app called Footage, which lets you quickly resize, mute, flip, rotate, trim, and crop a video, and export it in another format. It's already available on Flathub. And there's also Wildcard, a new simple app to practice regular expressions and see the results of that expression with some boilerplate text. On top of that, there are updates to Telegram, the Telegram client, now called Paperplane to Graphs, the data plotting and manipulation app, to Gradients, the Libadvita theming manager, to Denaro, the personal finance manager, and to a lot of other apps and development tools. Like really, this was a huge week for GNOME applications. It's insane how this app ecosystem is progressing and getting better and better since Libadvita was introduced. Always impressive to me. Now, in the KDE world, we can look forward to a much better digital signing experience on Ocular. And I'm talking about signing with a digital certificate, not stamping a PNG signature on top of a document. Now, this signature workflow got more fields that you can complete to add some metadata to your signature, or you can even add a background image. The digitally sign option will also be visible directly in the main hamburger menu of Ocular. 
Dolphin gained the ability to perform a double click on a tab to duplicate it. All dialogues in the system monitor were ported to Kirigami, so they will look better and should resize more nicely. Plasma 6 is also moving forwards nicely and the widgets API is being refactored to modernize it and be less error prone for new widget developers. And since widgets would have to be ported to Qt 6 anyway for Plasma 6, it was a good time to work on that API. Now, if you want to follow the development of Plasma 6, there's also a new wiki page that shows all the current issues and notable changes in Plasma 6. And obviously the Plasma world is far less active on the surface these days as the GNOME world because all efforts are focused on Plasma 6 and porting apps and components to Qt 6 or to make them work on Plasma 6. And I can't wait to get my hands on a stable version to start testing it. And let's finish this with the gaming news. Now the biggest one this week is probably the new Steam update with its big redesign. A lot of the code for the desktop Steam client is now shared with the code used on the Steam Deck and the new big picture mode. So things should move faster on that front. And this redesign also comes with a revamped navigation header, revamped dialogues, menus and fonts to look a bit more modern and also more in line with the UI of the deck. Notifications are much improved as well and the in-game overlay has been completely rebuilt with separated windows for viewing achievements, a web browser, and a new per-game notes window that syncs with your account. You can also pin any of these elements that will then stay visible on top of the game while you play. And if you use a controller, the Steam Deck configurator is also part of the overlay now, so you can remap your buttons easily. On top of that, the desktop client is now hardware accelerated on Linux and on macOS, which will make it far more responsive. You can turn that on in the settings in the interface tab if it's not on by default. And I've been using this new redesign for a while now since they released it in beta probably like a month ago and it's been awesome. The hardware acceleration really makes it a breeze to use. It scrolls faster, it's smoother, it's just way better even on an Nvidia GPU. Now on top of that for Linux specifically, the latest beta for the desktop client of Steam brings much improved scaling. They now have support for an environment variable to force a specific scaling factor when you're launching Steam, something that was sorely lacking on our desktops. And it also makes removing non-Steam games from Steam much cleaner, as it will remove shader cache files and compatibility data that was previously left in place. And finally, for AMD GPU users, there are good news. With Mesa 23.2, ray tracing will be enabled for these GPUs by default. It was only doable manually for certain titles previously, but now it should support any game that has the option for ray tracing, which is nice. Although performance is apparently really not great compared to what you would have on Windows, but they know about it and they're working on it. And that's yet another barrier that's being lifted for people who want to make the move from Windows to Linux and that also want to game. And for people who want to move to Linux, there's no better option than our sponsor. If you're looking for a new computer to run Linux on, stop buying devices that were only made to support Windows. Buy something from Tuxedo from the link in the description below. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed and all the components inside have been picked specifically because they work really, really well with Linux. You can select from a variety of distributions, including Tuxedo's own Tuxedo OS, which is basically a rolling release Kubuntu of sorts, or you can just install any distro that you prefer on it afterwards. All the devices are very configurable and they have a huge range from the affordable ultrabooks to the giant workstations or gaming towers or gaming laptops. They have everything and all their laptops are openable, upgradable and repairable, including the SSD, the RAM and the battery. So for your next purchase to run Linux, click the link in the description below and get a Tuxedo PC. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoyed the channel, I left plenty of links to support it in the description as well, from LiberaPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, you know how this works. So thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.